Hey everyone, welcome back. For the last little while, I've been playing with a few projects that will involve some pumps. Now, instead of buying pumps, I decided I was going to try and 3D print them. So I come up with a couple designs. I'm kind of in the middle of this project right now, so I'll start at the beginning and catch everyone up. So when I was thinking about this project I'm working on, I needed a water pump and preferably something that'll have a decent amount of pressure to it. And so I was looking at positive displacement pumps. Now I could have went with the vein pump like my supercharger, but I decided to go in a different route and I went with the external gear pump. Originally, I had a larger housing that had no clearance or a lot of clearance and it didn't pump anything. Uh, I also had a leaking issue, so I tried going with an O-ring, this little guy, but I kept having issues with the shaft overheating and melting all the drives off and all the gears and everything would fall apart. So that didn't work. So then I switched to the long drive, which I have here on the other pump. This just has a shaft in there that couples to the original motor sha or a pump shaft. In the pump so how the external gear pump works is the fluid comes in from well whichever side depending on which way it's rotating and is drawn around the gears and sealed by the mesh and the walls on the outside and then pumped out the other port here so originally this was the first housing I started with you can see here that the gears don't sit very tightly in there and this worked all right but it never pumped much for water so I went with this housing, which tightened everything up a little bit. As you can see here, well, I didn't clean up these gears, but everything is really tight. The problem with that is, these little motors that I was planning to use with this don't have enough jam for that. So, I built this little gearbox that just mounts on the back, and the motor mounted like that, like that. And that works, but then after I got it working, the shaft seal, the O-ring there, would get everything so hot, like I said before. And you can see here that that one is one of the melted ones, and the shaft, the D-shaft, had spun in it, rendering it useless. So after playing around with the external gear pump for a while, I decided to switch to the internal gear pump. And as you can see here, through the clear face... We got a small gear, that one's connected to the shaft driven by the motor, and we got a large external gear that's just sitting in the housing, that's just rubbing on the housing, there's no bushings or anything, and that one little seal plate here, that little piece that seals the fluid from one side to the other. The fluid is drawn in from the back face of the pump, from the port, and drawn out the other side. I found this pump setup to be a lot more efficient than the external gear pump, However, it's still kind of noisy, although it does seem to work decently. Well, that should keep you guys up to date with what I've been up to so far. So now, we're going to go on what I haven't done yet. So this is just a standard centrifugal pump. Now, this is not a positive displacement pump, but it's much larger than anything you're going to get from a, like a pond pump or anything. At least to run on the size of motor I'm working with. I'm hoping this will do what I need to do, because if so, it'll last longer than all the other pumps combined. As there's no rubbing parts, although it is a little bit tight right now. And you can't see it there. There we go. So I'm going to make finish making the long drive setup for this, and we're going to run some of them through some tests. Alright, so I have both pumps ready to go. Both have the same motors. Same drive system, but one of them's the internal gear pump and one's a centrifugal pump. Now, we're kind of comparing apples to oranges here because they're both applicable in two different situations. However, for this drive, we'll see which works better. One of the projects I've been working on that will require a water pump is, well, this is just the prototype, but kind of see it outside there. That is two TECs or Peltier's stacked onto a water block and a fan and a heat sink on the other side and i'm just circulating the water into the tank right now so as you can see this is like a mini air conditioner sort of deal this is gonna have to run all the time so this pump works really well however it's rather loud and i'm gonna fire it up just here to show you so there it is 
it's a little bit loud. I mean, it's not unbearable, but it would be nice if it was a little quieter. So, that's why I was working on the centrifugal pump. It has less interfering parts and should be enough flow and head pressure to manage this. Here I have the centrifugal pump installed and just about ready to go. I'm going to fire that up and hopefully it works and it's a little bit quieter than the other one. Well there's the centrifugal pump running. It uh, doesn't quite have the same pressure the other pump has and not quite the same flow but for this application it'll work. But if I get any more water blocks or other cooler units set up in the system like I plan to, this is going to be a little bit of an issue. So. I'm not sure if I'm going to plan on using this for the long term and might try and make the gear pump a little quieter somehow. Another thing I've noticed is for some reason it seems to be pumping water up they're pumping up the long drive tube and it's leaking out the top. I mean these motors aren't really too bothered by water but you know being that they're going to be in this for a very long time I'd rather not have them getting too wet. So hopefully that's not a problem. I do have more of these cheap motors kicking around. I steal them from printers, like laser desk, laser the desk jets and whatnot. You know, junk people give me. So I should have a few more kicking around, and I can always just put a better motor on there and go with a longer shaft. There are a couple different ideas I have, but this seems to be working for now. So while I was setting up for the next shot here started making a bunch of noise. Uh, I don't really know what that means, but well, we'll see what happens. My first test I was going to do after the uh, initial running test here to see how much water they move was going to be how long it'll last. So more of just a torture test. I was going to run it for 12 hours and see what happens. Basically, it's 8.30 now. I probably got to get up at 7 o'clock this morning, so or tomorrow morning, I should say. So after that, we'll see how this pump is still going by then. Alright, well, it's a little later than I wanted. It's almost 12 noon in the next month. Uh, 12 noon the next day. Uh, it started making a little bit more noise, and the water flow seems to have decreased a little bit. It's still going though. However, I don't know if you can see it from here. The case looks, the housing looks like it's split open a little bit, and my phone's not going to focus. So if it's split, I imagine that's where all the pressure's going. Alright, we switch back to the gear pump for the ultimate test. I don't know if you can see it. This one flows a little bit more at the beginning, well hopefully she'll hold up after 12 plus hours. Now it seems to flow a little better overall with a little bit better pressure because we don't get that air bubble trapped in here. So it's somewhat sunny out and I got the solar panel there hooked up to that cooler and I got this heat sensor here so we're going to see how cold the water is compared to ambient. So we're around 21 degrees here, ambient room temperature. We're gonna see how cold the water is. All right, so I got this sensor stuff right in the return port. And it's definitely a couple degrees colder than ambient. Not as much as I was hoping, but it's not a very sunny day out there. I got the centrifugal pump here on the bench and you can definitely see where it's cracked down the side. Now, like I said, it's cracked up to the fitting. So I'm assuming the tapered pipe fitting put a little bit too much pressure on it and with the temperature change and maybe some vibration, it couldn't hold up. This should easily be fixed with just, uh, you know, some minor modifications or reprinting. I'll probably just glue it up and, you know, sand down the impeller where it's a little bit off and it's rubbing and it should quieten it up a bit. So I'm going to disassemble it here and see if there's any other physical damage to the impeller or anything else visible from the inside. Well, there's no wear or anything visible other than a little bit on the face there. Probably nothing you guys can even see on the camera. And same within here. Seems to be alright. 
Just a little bit of friction marks here and there. Like right there. You could probably just, you know, take a little file or an emery cloth or even just a die grinder and peel a little bit off there. And that's probably just where all the noise is coming from. So I don't actually see any damage to the pump other than the crack, and that's probably more of a printing failure than anything. So, yeah, overall a success. Alright, so last night I fell asleep a little early. It's the next day, so it's been running for more than 12 hours, so we're going to pop this one apart and see what it looks like inside. You could see a little bit of wear where it was rubbing. It's definitely a lot smoother than it was when I initially put it together. I don't know if that'll come out of there. I mean, I don't see any extreme wear. I put a little bit of Vaseline on this when I first put it together, and it's still greasy. Well, it seems like they both hold up. It should last a decent amount of time. Well, overall another success. After both tests survived the 12 plus hours initial run in, I wanna figure out ballpark at least how many liters per minute we're gonna get. So I am gonna take this tank and because the pump won't draw all the way down to the bottom, I'm gonna start at zero here. And I'm gonna add one liter of water. Once it settles down. Somewhere on here. There, one liter. And then now I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So the point of adding the more water is so that I can manage to hit the timer. Uh, give me a little bit of time before starting the pump and hitting the timer. So, first off, we're going to start with the centrifugal pump after I've cleaned it up and fixed the crack. Alright. That's 29. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. So, that's about ballpark 2 liters per minute. Here, set up with the internal gear pump, and we're ready to go. So that gets us about 57.4. So just uh, you know, rounding up, we got one liter and two liters per minute, respectively, for the pumps. So. Not bad. Well, overall, I'm pretty happy with these pumps. We got two liters and one liters per minute. That is powering them with a laptop power brick, putting out 19.9 volts, give or take. I plan on running them on 24 volts, so we'll end up with a little bit higher flow rates, but it doesn't really make enough to matter. I plan on working on these pumps a little bit more. I have posted all the link or the, all the SDLs on Thingiverse, and we'll post the links in the description. I hope you liked it. If you did, click like. If you want to see more, click subscribe and click that little bell in the corner. Have a good one.